So now that we've downloaded the file, we're going to pop a 1.44 meg pre-formatted floppy disk into our external floppy disk drive. Now it's very important that you format the disk on the machine you're going to be using it on. So if we're running a DOS 6.22 machine like this one, format the disk on that. Do not use the uh, format utility on the Mac because you wind up with read write errors. So now what we're going to do is look for that file we downloaded here. It's in my downloads folder. There it is. Okay. Then we're just going to open up that zip file. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> there it is. And these particular games are, are actually stored in a single folder in the zip file. So we're just going to copy that folder straight to the floppy disk. Oh, obviously there's not enough free space. So in this case, we've got to divide this up a little bit. So we're going to find out how big the actual file is, or the folder, I should say. We we'll get info. We're looking at 2.3 megs. So why don't we take some of the largest files away? So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide this up into two floppy disks. Okay, so what I've done is I've created two folders, Desert 1 and Desert 2, and I've divided up the files between the two folders so that one is a 913k, the other one is 1.405. Okay. But that 1.405 is still a little too close for comfort. I think I'm going to shrink that down a little bit. So I'm going to move a couple of folders from Desert 1 to Desert 2. I'm going to take a couple of 4K files here. Just shrink it down a little bit. Okay. Now yeah, we're still pretty close. Let's do the other 4K file there. Much better. All right. Now let's see how they fit. So Desert 1 is going into its own disk. Those are the two largest files in the game. Hopefully it fits. Okay, looks like everything fit just fine. Let's go ahead and eject that disk. Okay, here's desert number two. Now in the meantime, we can start copying Desert 1 after we label the disk with a marker. And we'll copy the contents from this disk onto the Desert folder on the 3D6. So here we go. Hold the camera with my other hand. All right. Now we're going to go into File Manager. You could do this in DOS as well, but I'm being lazy, so let's make a new folder. Now this is the File Manager for Windows 3.1. If you've never seen it before, it's uh, pretty low tech, actually. Um, and a little difficult to navigate sometimes. But not really, actually. Create directory. We're going to call this one Desert. Okay. Oops, I mistakenly put that in the wrong. We're going to just move it up one level there. There we go. All set. Now, Desert. There it is. Make that our active directory. 
going to drive A. And we're going to copy the contents and drive A. Hold on the shift key. Copy to D colon slash desert. Enter. I have partitioned my drive in this machine to have everything OS related in a small partition and all the applications and whatnot in, in their own partition. And we're going to label this disk Desert 2. One very annoying bug in the Windows 3.1 file manager is it doesn't always detect a disk change in drive A. So I'm going to put disk number 2 in. Let's go ahead and try to reread that drive. I've had this happen on numerous occasions where it didn't detect, see it didn't, there we go. It did not detect the disk change. Now if we go to drive C, it may or may not work. Here, let's try it again. I've an often I've often yeah see I have to go and exit the utility and then reopen it. I've had that issue on every 3.1 machine I've ever owned. As annoying as that was. Um, it appears to me that I've mistakenly copied some stuff to that that uh, disk that I wasn't supposed to. Um, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I screwed that one up, didn't I? Well, it's all there, regardless. So we're going to just uh, copy everything over. Another thing about Windows 3.1, for those of you who aren't familiar, there is no trash can. So when you delete a file, it's gone. Keep that in mind. Not that I've done that, but... Um, when you delete a file, it just goes away. That was a feature introduced in Windows 95. Alright, now that we've copied the two disks to drive D in the desert folder. We're going to try to run the game and see what happens. Now sometimes you'll find a game that has an install folder on it, or install file on it. Um, if you find one that does, don't do the copy procedure I just showed you. Try to run the installer from a common directory in the drive. So copy both disks into one folder labeled something irrelevant, like cookies, and then run the installer. That will automatically create the folder and set any preferences in the process. But that isn't the issue in this case, so we're going to go ahead and try to run the game. Hmm. We've got disk activity, so it looks like it's running. There we go. I don't know who Scunny is, but right on, dude. Okay. Looks like this particular game runs off the mouse. Now you'll see a lot of... Well, actually, you can see it on the camera, but not so much in person. But there's some visual noise on the display here. Um, when it refreshes and redraws this machine has done that since day one. I don't know what, what... When you're playing games like this, it seems to do that. But I've had other 386s have the same problem, so... Whatever. So let's start the game without reading the instructions. This looks like it'll be a pretty fun, uh, pretty fun game. I 
should probably read the directions. I have no idea what I'm doing. The visual noise isn't isn't really relevant. It isn't as visible. Oh wait, I think I'm supposed to. Okay, I get it. So I'm I'm flying an aircraft. This is like Zaxxon, only better. Do I have firepower? Uh oh, that didn't look good. Um, I think that is my fire. Oh, so I use the space bar. Okay. Whoops. Did you see that? There was an air wrap that just jumped out of that plane. Um, this game is racist. So, let's see. I can't walk and chew gum, so I've got to... Oops, oops. Yeah, I've got to put the camera down, and then I'll figure out how this game works. But this is pretty cool. I like it. So that's that. That's how you get a free game from your DOS machine. Um, and you can also run these games in uh, DOSBox or any system virtualization um, machine. On You can run it on a Mac if you want to. So anyway, that's that. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed and hope you learned a few things. Here's a game that I spent a great deal of time trying to find um, because I couldn't figure out what the title was. I had this game hell 15 years ago that's how long it's been since i've played this game 15 years the game is called ace of aces and i used to run it on my original ibm pc that i had in 1995 um and through the advent of the internet i was able to find a copy download it throw it on my on my ibm and here we go now this is a good example of a game that was designed to run on an 8088 machine, or at least a 286, no bigger than that. No faster, I should say. Um, this game, well, you'll see. If you notice, the rate of which the smoke is pouring out of this guy's pipe is astronomical. He would have died of lung cancer five seconds ago if this were true. If he were smoking it that fast. So. The first thing you do is you select keyboard or joystick, and you do a practice run or a mission. I loved this game when I had it. It was one of my favorites. Um, it was one of my first flight simulator simulator games. The sound is horrible. The graphics are horrible. This was the 80s. This was high tech. So here we go. And this was also available for the Commodore as well. But again, another example of a game that was not designed to run on anything faster than an 8088, because, well, take a look. Now the controls are very simple. You use the arrow keys to move the aircraft up or down, or adjust the, the uh, flight control stick. You've got your altimeter here, your uh, artificial horizon, and your speed indicator here. This is your compass and your damage indicator. Here is a, um, a radar screen. The clouds are not supposed to flash anywhere when you shoot with a space bar. The game is surprisingly difficult um, when you're running it on something this fast because it's just, it just um, unrealistic. When you're running it on an 8088, um, it's actually fairly... It's a fun game to play. But I'm going to try and deliberately crash my aircraft here. My altimeter is going down, down. Oh, I've crashed. And uh, gives me my status screen, cause of death, crashed into ground, and high scores. So that was that. I mean, I used to love this game back in, back in the early mid '90s when I was just starting out, and. Uh, I do plan on, once I finally get my uh, three and a half inch floppy drive for the Tandy, I'm going to put a lot of this stuff on the Tandy and then we're going to try it out on that and see how well it runs. Oh, and I just found a copy of the Tandy 1000 SX uh, Guide to Operations. I got this on eBay for four bucks and it'll be a nice addition to the, uh, to the Tandy system.